All right, what's up, everyone? We're back here from the 2012 World Championships. I'm Kyle Sukovic with me is Drew Holton, and we are about to start the top eight match between Stefan Tobacco and Jay Hornung. What do you think about this matchup? Uh, it should be an exciting one. Uh, Stefan, he's been uh, a trooper this weekend. He came all the way through the LCQ. Yeah. <laughs> and Jay Hornung, we all know Jay. He's been a competitor for years, and he just came off the top four at Nats. I feel like if there's anyone you don't want to face in these early top cut rounds, it's a guy who grinded in and he still has the momentum, carrying all the way into day three of Worlds. I guess day one is the grinder. Uh, I mean, he had to win a ton of matches to make it through the grinder. He went 6-0 and during Swiss, then lost the last round to Sammy Sakum, which, I mean, that's no shame yeah. in that. And then here he is. He's in top eight, and he's just kind of bulldozing people. We'll see if his run can continue. Yeah, I know he's been begging us all weekend to tape one of his games, and finally, here he is on the big screen. But yeah, he's had a huge cheering section all weekend. Everyone is pumped to see him. I guess he just barely missed the rating invite. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, he was very vocal about being upset about not getting a, a pass down for a rating invite. He finished like 46th, top 40 get invites. But I guess we should talk about his opponent, who is no slouch, uh, <laughs> Jay Horung, who just always seems to do well at these events. Of course, he made top four at U.S. Nationals this year. Here he is, top eight at Worlds. What an incredible season he's having. Yeah, I think he really, really wants to finish off one of these events. I think he's kind of one of those players, Tom Dolezal also, that really goes far in a number of events, but they've never actually finished a deal and won one, so he's definitely looking to do that right here this weekend. Yeah, all right, and I think they're starting to set up. So let's take a look at the match. Now, this will be a CMT once again. Stefan is actually the only non-Dark Rack yeah. deck left in the field. They're running CMT, and he will be going up against Jay's Dark Rack Mewtwo. I think Stefan will be going first. That's what it looks like. Usually you put a die yeah, next by to your person side. who's going first. Uh, what do you think about the matchup? I mean, it's not a straight Dark Rack deck. It's Dark Rack Mewtwo. Do you think that changes this dynamic at all? I think Mewtwo's a very versatile card. It adds a little a versatility, yeah. Just another attacker that Jay has in his arsenal for situational purposes. Uh, I think you'll see, obviously, Stefan probably plays Mewtwo in his deck, so maybe some trades off there, but maybe it lessens the impact of Terrakion. Yeah, I know Stefan plays kind of a strange version of CMT. You know, he's from California. They all have their own twist on the yeah. deck. Uh, he's got his whole California cheering section here, and I think they've all probably played the same deck. He's the one who's had the most success with it. He does run a number of cards that you might think are outdated. I think I've seen Verizian, a leaf wall up one. Oh, boy. That's my man right Pokemon. there. <laughs> uh, I know he plays that. He might have Bufalon in there as well, which is my boy, <laughs> So we could be seeing an interesting deck. Uh, he also, of course, plays the track in standard CMT stuff, but he's got some other stuff thrown in there. I don't know if Jay is prepared for it. Yeah, that's the type of thing where you, when you play these tech cards that people aren't used to, you can really catch them off guard, and maybe that's what he's been doing all weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we said in the previous match, you don't know what to expect from CMT. Yeah. There's literally like hundreds of cards that could go yeah. into this deck. And if someone just decided to play, oh, I'm going to play a spinner rack one day, it could catch you off guard and you could just lose a weird match. Um, I mean, grass, fighting, those are all pretty versatile types with a bunch of different Pokemon. It could be the trainers, like Max Potion, Potion, if you like. Yeah. Who knows what's going to come out in this deck. Yeah, I think uh, Jay's probably going to use this first game to really feel what Stefan's playing, the kind of tech cards that he has, and then hope he ekes out that win. Yeah, I agree. Uh, of course, Jay is playing his Dark Ram Mewtwo deck. He said he's playing pretty much the same deck he used at U.S. Nationals. No real changes to it, and he's very confident with it. Uh, in fact, it's been doing very well here. I think it has three or four spots in the top eight. We also have uh, Mike Diaz playing yeah. the same deck. I think Yuta Komatsuda also playing yes, this deck. playing that as well. And Harrison Levin also might be playing it. So this just seems to be the ultimate versatile deck. You have the two best attackers, Darkrai and Yuta, and you just kind of go with it, and there goes our camera. <laughs> well, uh, 
Well, uh, Kyle's going over to take care of that. Um, I believe, as he said, five of the top eight decks are this Dark Rai Mewtwo version, and then we see the Tom Rai is two other versions, as well as this Lone CMT. Alright, so our camera is back in position. Kyle ran over and fixed that for us, and things are looking good. They're doing some announcements right now, and we are. There's the countdown. We are just about to start. All right, I made a bag. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. All right, and Stefan flashing the West Side yep. symbol to the camera. He's very proud of his California upbringing. All weekend, whatever he wins, he just <laughs> someone stands up and starts screaming West Side, uh, West Coast, West Coast. Yeah. He's actually gotten a couple penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, he's gotten a couple warnings. They said if he ever mouths up again. He's going to get an actual penalty for it. So. Yeah, you hate to see that, and uh, especially when he's gone this far. Um, obviously, you're excited, but you got to kind of contain that. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable to be excited, but if it's to the point where you're, like, rubbing it into your opponent's face, yeah. making them feel bad when they've already lost, um, that's just kind of not acceptable behavior. But uh, he doesn't seem to care. He's yeah. just kind of living on the edge. And just playing the game, I guess. Yeah, I would say he's got a little bit of swagger to his play. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me a lot of uh, like Gino Lombardi. Yes. Or he just kind of says what's on his mind. He doesn't care what anyone else thinks. He's just going to go out and play. Yeah, he's playing his game, and yeah, that's the way it is. I mean, we've seen some people that are reserved. You know, they're quiet. Yeah. They just are very polite. Some people, they get more excited about this stuff. And there's not a better way one way or the other. So, I'm not sure what his actual active is there. It's tornadoes. Tornadoes, okay. Yeah. Quite blurry or blurry. <laughs> yeah, you can see uh, the little cloud. Oh, uh, the little cloud tail. I thought that was like a glare spot. <laughs> nope, no. That's, uh, that's the normal tornadoes, not the floor yeah. one. So, you will grab a Tornadus EX and a Celebi. So, I, I just wanted to point out, this game could actually end on this turn. It could. <laughs> yeah, Jay just has a smear goal. All it takes is that Tornadus EX. Sky Arrow, two energy, plus power. Yep. Game over. <laughs> it's definitely within the realm of possibilities. Yeah. But it's the scary part about the CMT deck. Anything can happen. There's and a Juniper. Oh, yeah. This could be a very fast game one. <laughs> this is something that a lot of people complain about in Pokemon that you might not even get to draw a card. Will this happen here? This is one of the benefits of CMT. Yeah. You could just win on the first turn. Yeah, I think we saw it a lot with our just our world coverage. I think we had three games that were over within the first couple turns, mm -hmm. which is crazy out of seven rounds. <laughs> yeah, you hate to see it, but it's a part of the game until the rules change. It's yeah. just you have to accept it. Sometimes it happens. And oh, uh, there's a double call list. I don't. Oh, um, I, yeah, I don't think he had it. He had a lot of energy in that hand. I think he had the plus power as well, which is he ends up coming one card away. That's crazy. He certainly could have pulled something off there. Or he need, he would need the Sky Arrow right. and the Switch, so... Or not the Switch. Just a Sky Arrow and yeah. a plus power? That would have been game over. So Jay, gotta be breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> Survive turn one. Now we'll see where it goes from here. So he's gonna go ahead and catch her out the Tornadus. Just gonna make sure that Stefan doesn't get a portrait off next turn. And also, he discarded his Sky Arrow Bridge. Instead of playing it down, that's pretty smart. CMT is a deck that really resolve or revolves around having the Sky Arrow Bridge in play. If your Celebi and your Spiritual don't have free retreat, they become pretty bad cards actually. Yeah. Uh, so Jay recognizes this. He knows. All right, I'm not going to get the free retreat, but it's more important for him to have it. So I'm just going to force him to play it down. Yes. What you get at the top eight of worlds. Yeah. Excellent competitors. Yeah, Jay understands the game very well. He is one of the most consistent performers we've ever seen in this game. I mean, he has second place at U.S. Nationals, third place this year, third place at Worlds. He's qualified for every single World Championship under yeah. the Nintendo era. And he is pretty much the definition of a consistent player. And he, he doesn't really do anything fancy. He just does all the right things and carries him to victory. Yeah. Like I said earlier, kind of reminds me of, of Tom Dolezal, that consistency. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, he's very comparable to Tom, except Tom doesn't play very often. <laughs> and, uh, Jay plays all the time. Yeah, so you can see it's just kind of what Tom could be like if he actually played all the time. Yeah. He could be here every year. <laughs> I mean, he pretty much is anyway. But, um, so he used uh, Tornadus' first attack, right? Energy wheel, yeah. I don't get to see that very often. Um, he moved the double call list up from the bench. And now he's got three energy on his tornadoes. It's kind of risky. If he were to get knocked out, he would lose all his energy. And I have to say, Stefan does not have a very good start. No. So I'm with that supporter. And he chose not to retreat his tornadoes into Smyrna. Yeah. That was an interesting choice. Uh, but he actually got bailed out by Jay and played an end here. Yeah. Maybe Jay just didn't have another supporter. But usually when you recognize that your opponent has nothing... Try not to play it. Yeah, at the same time, um, Stefan is kind of being aggressive with the tornadoes. Yeah. So this is a side effect. He had to end or his Smyrgle was going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Jay just would have lost his Smyrgle. Pressure would have been on him, so might as well go for the end. Try to beat Stefan to the punch. Which he appears to have done. <laughs> yeah, that's, he's going to be able to go ahead and Night Spear this turn. It's not going to knock out the tornadoes, but he'll hit it for 90. And Probably set hit. up the Selmy or something. something yeah, like that. he can hit either Selmy or the tornadoes. He actually yeah. set that up for two prizes eventually. Both are fine choices. And if you're Jay, even though you won second, you're probably feeling extremely comfortable with where you're at right now. He's got to feel good about that tornado, or the dark ray. Yeah, it's got an EV light. It's got three energy. He's going to be able to turn two Night Spear. Against the guy who turned to energy wheels. Yeah. Uh, that's, I would define that as a great situation. <laughs> but still, this is CMT. You can just drop a track in the grass out of nowhere. And out of nowhere. You just retaliate a dark ride. Just blow him out of the game. And it's always scary. You never really know when you have the game won against CMT. Because so it can just drop everything at once. Yeah. And he gets another energy on a dark ride, so his field is <laughs> looking pretty good. Uh, Jay, he's hitting the right cards at the right time, that's for sure. Dark ride's telling everyone to taste the pain. <laughs> he does a pretty good job at it. So Jay does target the Tornado CX. He realizes if if that gets an EV light, I won't be able to knock it out in two hits. Yeah. So he has a 30. Now if it gets an EV light, it's just two Night Spears away. Damage adds up perfectly. Yeah, my thing with that is if Stefan plays like a max potion or something, he really kind of wasted that night spear, where he could have easily gotten the two the two turn or two prize knockout with the Selby. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I guess that Selby is always going to be there as a prize. Yeah. So might as well just try to soften up the attacker. And if you notice there, that is an old school super rod. <laughs> I didn't even know you could play that version. Yeah, I think you need like a, a translate or like an up-to-date version of the card with you. But man, that's like all the way back to Neo. That is an old card. Is it even the same text? No, it's yeah, completely it's, different. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but yeah, you're allowed to play old cards. You can play like the old revive, the old energy retrieval. As long as you have the newer version, you can play uh, the old versions of the cards as long as they have the same name. Wow. So all this stuff, he's got base set switch. <laughs> it's going old school. Base set double call this. Everything that's old school that he can fit. We'll see if the revive comes out too. <laughs> uh, but he has just switched here. He's playing a port or a plus power. Not a base set plus power though. Nope. It's too bad. But a portrait and Jay has not. Nah, he's got a junk arm, a dark, and a smear goal. Yeah, he's definitely not having the best start here. Yeah, uh, this is pretty ugly. He's going to be knocked out, probably a double knockout actually on his Tornadus too. Yeah, and I think we see his hand, he's got like a Shaman, a Junk Arm. Yeah, he might just Shaman to move the energy off his Tornadus. That might be a waste though. Because usually you want Shaman for one big move yeah. to like crack in. But he's going to go ahead and do it. I guess he's going to retreat. Okay. Alright. I like it. It's yeah, gonna force avoiding Jay. Avoiding the two prizes. Yeah, gonna force Jay to have a counter to get the double knight spear knockout. We'll see what Jay top deck. Um, if if he top decked a supporter, I'm sure Stefan's gonna be Oof. pretty on 
can't be. So he, he chooses Tornado CX over the Smurgle. What do you think about that? Um, it's an interesting choice. I don't really know how I feel about it. What it's going to do is force him to either attack with this thing. Yeah. In that case, that he just gets knocked out. If he retreats, then, I mean, he has to lose the energy, and then that's still there to be captured two prizes. Uh, so I don't know. It's interesting. You might just take the Smeargle, but Jay has no cards in his hand. So that's true. He doesn't true. care about Porcher right now. Uh, kind of a strange situation where Jay is just kind of playing the board, and it doesn't actually matter because Stefan has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so he went ahead and did the just the ten attack. Blow through for ten. It's not usually how you want your turn five to go. Wow. Uh, Jay's gonna take three prizes. I think this one is kind of wrapped up. I and, mean, there's yeah. so many easy prizes for Jay to take at this point. There's no Terrakian out there. There's no Selby out there. There's one heads on Duval. There's no supporter in Stepatan. And if he portraits and. Jay didn't get a support from the prizes. I have to imagine he's thinking scoop. Yeah, well, he might not even have to scoop because this game's over in two turns yeah. anyway. Um, huh. Really uncharacteristic of uh, a deck to get this far and then just kind of crap out at the most inopportune moment. But any deck can have this happen where you just draw a bad hand, no supporters. CMT is probably the most prone to this sort of thing. Yep. You have to feel uh, Stefan's really fought through some adversity at some point oh, during yeah. his weekend. I mean, there had to be some LCQ games where he was right on the edge yeah. of elimination. So he knows what this feels like. Even his last match in the top 16 went to time. Uh, so he won in turn three of the uh, plus three turns. And I'm sure he's used to the pressure. All right, so there he does scoop. Okay, so pretty uneventful game one. If you're Jay, you got to be thinking... Oh man, one more game. I'm almost there. I win a trip to next year's Worlds. There's a lot of pressure here. If you're Stefan, you're like, whatever. Um, that was just one game. Things didn't go my way. I can still win this. It's yeah, not he's over. got this. Yeah. So both players probably have differing perspectives at this point, but a lot of pressure either way for both guys. For Jay, it's one game and I go to Worlds next year. I get back to the top four. I'm one step closer to being world champion. Stefan is, I gotta win this or I'm out. There's tons it's, of pressure. Yeah, it's down to the wire, man. We're coming up on, coming up on some exciting finishes here. Yeah, exciting matches. Of course, ton of prizes for the winner of this match. Not only the trip to Worlds, but the increase in scholarship money. Of course, you get like a bunch of merchandise, yeah. promos. I'm sure they don't care about that. They want to win this thing. Right. Um, I'm sure... Well, this is kind of like the plateau match for most people. You want to hit that yeah. top four at Worlds. That way, you win your invite for next year. You don't even have to play the next season. You got your fully paid trip. You're just going to go to Worlds. I mean, I'm sure someone like Jay who said he's having a hard time finding time yeah, in the game anymore. Yeah. You know, with school and work and all that stuff. He would love to just have a free ride to just go play in Worlds. I mean, these guys love the game, but if they don't have the time to play, they might not be back in next year's Worlds. Yeah, I think you've seen that a lot, a common complaint this season as the championship points system gets introduced. Yeah. It's getting a little harder for some people to continue to play with the number of events you really have to travel to. Yeah, and it's just getting tougher and tougher every year. Of course, Stefan's from California, which probably has the worst in traveling. Yeah. California is a huge place, and you have to just drive hours and hours to get wherever you want to go. So this would be big for him as well. I'm sure they would both love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone would mind winning this match. Yeah. So we're going to set up here. I'm pretty sure Stefan will choose to go first. And he flips over a Terrakian versus a Dark Rock. All right. Not much to say about that Terrakian not really your best starter. You would prefer to start Celebi or Smeargle. For sure. <laughs> uh, Terrakian, you don't want to drop him until you can power him up, otherwise he's going to get hit by a Night Sphere. And you really just want to just have that big Terrakian with no damage and an Eevee Light on him and just say, deal with that, Darkrai. He's, he's going to just be plowing through like two Darkrai before <laughs> he goes down. So he actually had a pretty horrible opener because he just had to end right away. 
Yeah, we're seeing Stefan's deck not function too well here. I'm sure it's been going smoothly for him. Oh, it had to. Yeah, <laughs> to get this far. But right now, he's just... I don't know what's happening. It, sometimes you just draw a couple bad hands, and you're on the bad end of some bad luck. But yeah. Uh, I think you know how that feels every world. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it happens. Um, he actually decides to bench... You two, Selby, Smeargle, and uh. Yeah, he's coming back down. He realized that the Mewtwo was a mistake. Tried to take it back, and Jay's like, no, it's down. <laughs> but, so I think nerves might be getting to Stefan, and his hand is horrendous. He does not have another supporter. So, could see a quick 2 0 from Jay if yeah. things don't turn around. Stefan really needs either a way to get this track into the bench or the energy to apply some pressure. Yeah, and benching the Mewtwo is really yeah. not good for you. If Jay can pull off like a Shaman to his own Mewtwo and just catch her out, Steph, and that's just two prizes that are sitting there for him. So, I don't really know. Stefan's going to need the top deck at the very least. He doesn't have anything in his hand. Jay's got a pretty, pretty solid start again, I would say. And I think he's probably going to retreat and portrait and oh, just yeah. see how bad Stefan's hand is. Do have a Dark and an Eevee Light on um, this Dark Ride. Eevee Light, of course, very important against Terrakian. Force them to have a plus power to knock you out in one hit. Uh, we have a Dark Patch. Eternal Night Sphere probably not happening because we, we know Portrait won't net him anything. That's true. So, it's still scary when you see your opponent. Play a dark patch. Yeah, but <laughs> the more energy that go on that dark ride, the more fearful you become. Once it gets to two, you're like, uh. And once it gets to three, you're like, uh. Oh, no. a switch. <laughs> but Jay does play an Ultra Ball. Gets the second Smeargle out there. Jay does this strategy a lot. I think we saw it in the top four at Nationals a few times, where he just goes ahead and plays more basics that aren't EX Pokemon. Yeah. His, his theory is just, Portrait is so good that it's going to help me. If I can get Portrait twice in a turn, that's such a huge advantage to get so many supporters in a turn. Um, and with this deck, you know, with Tom Dole's deck, where you just run the four Dark Rite, two yeah. Smeargle. That's a theory that works, because you only want to play one Smeargle, make him knock out three EXs. This one, you play Shaman too, so usually he has to go ahead and bench Shaman. So he probably thinks... Why not just bench this second Smeargle too? There's going to be targets anyway. Yep. So he, Stefan actually top decked the pot there, which is huge. Wow. Really, uh, got him going again. Yeah, he just hits Jay's Dark Ride for 40. That's a really big deal, actually. This game is taking a turn for the best yep. for Stefan. The momentum has shifted. <laughs> He's got two fighting on the Terrakian, which is. I mean, we said the two energy on the Dark Ride is scary, but the two energy <laughs> on the Terrakian is much scarier. Especially two fighting. Yeah. All it takes is one more energy, land crush, that Dark Ride is out of there with all the energy. And it's not that easy to just go, like, Dark Patch, Dark Patch, Dark Ride energy and power up another one. Yep. It usually takes you a couple turns. And it doesn't look like he has got the best hand either. Yeah, he still has Portrait. Depending on what's in Stefan's hand. So he's gonna get he's gonna power the dark ride, but is he gonna be able to retreat it? Yeah, that's the question here. He has a junk arm for catcher. So catcher, okay. okay this was the main reason why benching Mewtwo is bad in this situation. He's a catcher target. He can just get dragged up and if you don't have a switch, he's stuck there, you're gonna give up two prizes. Yeah. Even if you do, he's gonna get hit for ninety. And then <laughs> we'll He's just going to be hanging there for two prizes eventually. <laughs> this has got to be scary for Jay. All he has is this Dark Rye. Yeah. And it's already damaged. It's well within the knockout range. It seems like he's whiffing other attackers. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even have a second Dark Rye down. We're having a bit of a dispute on Dark Patch or attaching here. I don't think Jay attached. I thought it was a dark patch. Uh, yeah. It kind of happened quickly, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, it was definitely a dark patch, because Jay had two energy on the dark card last turn. So, 
that can always be a dispute <laughs> whether or not you yeah. played an energy that turn, which could have been a big deal. Don't want to have another Sky Arrow incident. Yeah. <laughs> and now it just comes down to does Stefan have a switch? That's number one. Energy. That's number two. He doesn't have. That's the dig for it. Yeah, he doesn't have either of those in his hand. These six cards are going to determine a lot here. If he, did, he does have the energy. Yeah, he, he played the energy. Played the grass. It's going to come down to drawing a switch. I don't know. I don't think he's played one yet. So. No, I don't believe so. Yeah, junk arm not an option. Just six cards. Does he get a switch? If he does, Jay is going to be in a ton of trouble. Yeah, it has to be a switch too. Did does he get he it? He have it. I don't see any base set art in there. You think he would be uh, a little more excited if he had it, so... Yeah, usually when you get it, you're just <laughs> like, switch. But when you don't get it, you're like, uh, how did I miss? What happened? What do I do now? And really, if he does miss, this Mewtwo's getting knocked out. And it's down That's two, two prizes. prizes. It's giving Jay another chance to power up a dark ride. That's probably 30 damage on something else. Maybe even 30 more in his Terrakian. Maybe 30 to Celebi. Either way is bad. Uh, and it goes from perfect situation to, holy crap, I'm down two prizes and there's damage on all my stuff. Yeah. He has to feel good about Jay not having anything else out, though. Yeah. So there is a glimmer of hope. Right. He has a level ball. It's interesting to see in this deck. I guess it does um, get you Shaman, Celebi, Smeargle. Gets you everything but Terrakion and Mewtwo. Yeah, that's true. And Tornadus, Tornadus I yeah. suppose. But at yeah, level ball, I guess it's just more reliable than dual ball. <laughs> yeah, we saw Ultra Ball last round, and then now we see level ball, so it yeah. seems like people don't like relying on dual ball. <laughs> Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's been burned by dual ball a couple times. Uh, so, chooses to retreat. Interesting choice. And there's no supporter. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he understood that if my Mewtwo gets knocked out, I am in horrendous shape. So he decides to use the Shaman to retreat it. I don't know if that was really worth it, but that's what he decided to do. Yeah, there's a lot of resources to spend just to retreat the Mewtwo. Right. And now Jay has the plus power. So he's going to get a catcher with his junk arm and knock out the Terrakian too. Stefan's going to be left with zero energy in play. No Terrakians. A Mewtwo with 90 damage and 30 on something else. So you can see how like fickle this matchup is. If you miss one turn of just Land Crush where you miss a switch, you miss an energy, you miss anything, it yeah. can just be like game over almost. Yeah, I think we see that Dark Rise advantage is its consistency. Yeah. Or CMT, it's if I draw X, Y, Z, boom, I win. But if I don't, if you, uh, miss, if you miss one piece of that puzzle, like the Switch, Sky Arrow Bridge, and there's a ton of cards, then you can just end up being like, pass, <laughs> instead of Land Crush, take two prizes. Yeah. But Jay portraited, he got an N, so Stefan got a new hand. Uh, he's definitely not out of the game. He could get the, like, the Sky Arrow... Two energy on it. Oh, we can definitely get the return knockout. Yeah, and still Jay doesn't have a new attacker powered up. He's going to Ultra Ball for something here. I think he's going to get a Dark Ride because he has an EV Light in his hand. Okay. That would be a good choice. Uh, considering the Mewtwo is already out yeah. there for Stefan. And yeah, yeah, there's another Dark Ride. I'd say Jay is playing it pretty well. I mean, he's had pretty much everything go his way, but. A lot of times people can manage to throw away a situation where they're in control of, but Jay has done pretty well so far, uh, being very cautious about everything. He understands how the matchup works. He's not going to walk in to retaliate knockouts if he doesn't have to. Yep. And, yeah, he just takes first prize. We have some issue here with Ultra Ball. I don't know what the problem is. Not sure what's going on. Yep. Jay will take first. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, and now, ugh, this is one of those turns again. Like, you have a thin window 
to do something, and it looks like he just decided to double attach to his Tornadus, and Power Blast for 80, gonna have to discard an energy. Once again, I don't think he has a supporter. Yeah, he's really trying to play the best he can off of what he's drawing. This is actually like kind of depressing to watch the player to get this far, do so well the whole weekend. And right here, he's just, he just doesn't have anything to work with. He's just kind of attacking, doing what he can. Just not enough, though. Hoping he top decks somewhere along the way, get rolling again. And Jay's got another catcher. So that means he's going to knock out this Mewtwo and the Celebi. It's going to be three prizes in one turn. Devastating. Jay's going to go down to two prizes. Stefan's still at six. How can he possibly come back from this? Yeah, it's going to be... A tough, tough task with no way. Right, he has one energy yeah. in the field, so. He's already used a Shaman. I don't know if he plays two. Most decks play one, so. He's already used that. Um, really, his only option is N at this point. Yeah. He's just gotta try to top deck an N, get lucky, and go from there. Yeah, this. Um, if Jay chooses to attack with this Dark Ride, it's, it's going to go down, so at least there will be some surprises there, and he'll get a few more cards off of that. Right. But uh, he actually chooses Smurgle. Maybe he has a switch in his hand? Yeah, he has a switch in his hand, okay. so at the very least, he'll be able to switch. He is crossing his fingers that Jay got, a, got an end off those prizes or something, and he did. Wow. Wow. This is a big turn of events. Jay still doesn't have another attacker power up. Yeah. This, this is just the power of N. You can just put someone at a small hand size and they can just run out of options, run out of attackers. Yeah. We've, we've seen some crazy comebacks just because of N. You might be seeing another one here. Yeah, Stefan can get a couple turns of Jay whiffing. He's right back in it. Yeah, for sure. Um, the obstacles he's going to have to avoid are Jay drawing a supporter. Stefan actually having a supporter in his hand would be another way, because Jay could just portrait and copy a supporter and get a new hand. Yep. Um, yeah, and Jay powering up another attack. That's the big one. That's the big hurdle. <laughs> so we did see he Juniper, and I don't know what he exactly I think got rid super, of. Uh, super odd now to get the back that track on. Yep. So he's going to go ahead and do that. Maybe he won't. Not sure what else is in his hand. Usually in this situation, if you have like a junk arm, you would want to discard your supporters. Yeah, get rid of those supporters. So then your opponent can't use portrait. Yeah, I think we've seen Jay use that a few times this game already. Right. So, Smeargle has kind of introduced a new element of skill into the game where you try to deny your opponent's supporters because it's just so strong to be able to like Juniper twice in a turn and go through so many cards. Yeah, I think CMT especially needs that. Those extra cards. Yeah, for sure. So we have another Power Blast. And this time, looks like he got heads. He's going to take his two prizes. Alright. There we go. Grabs a couple. It's, it's two to four at this point. Jay does not have a Dark Rite powered up. Uh, all it takes is a Dark Patch and energy, but it looks like he he's going goes ahead and... Mewtwo time. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, if Jay draws the right stuff, he could win this turn. He just needs a Shaman and a Catcher. That's true. That Mewtwo on Stefan's bench is a sitting duck. Oh, he got a random receiver, so... Uh, Maybe it's a Juniper or something. For oh, oh, there's boy. a Juniper. That's a Juniper. I know Jay plays two Shaman. He's got to have plenty of Catchers and Junk Arms left. Oh, yeah. That was his Nats list, though, right? So yeah. maybe he, he could have changed it. Uh, Jay's asking if you want to cut before we get to this huge moment in the game. We just need Shaman, Catcher. There's a Shaman. Does he draw the Catcher? Let's see. Our number seven. Oh, he looks... Ah, uh, he's leaning back in his chair. I don't think he got it. <laughs> I thought for a second he got it because he like... Yeah. Jay is, uh, is another player who is very emotional when he plays these games. Uh, he's not shy about <laughs> oh, showing yeah. his excitement <laughs> when he wins or loses. This kind of reminds me of what happened at Nationals where he had an opportunity against Kevin Nance in top To go four for it. To go for the Mewtwo for the win. And he decided not to and he drew the cards to get it. Uh, and this time he's saying, 
Alright. Stefan is visibly upset about something. Yeah, I think he assumes that he's lost at this point. Um, I mean, it does look bad for him. Yeah. He probably thinks that Jay has the catcher and the shaman, but I don't... Jay does not have both votes. Yeah, he's just trying to eliminate the supporters from his hand. Yeah. You see the Ultra Ball, and you can see Stefan. He realizes how bad the situation is. Shaman catcher, his world's run is over. Otherwise... Uh, he came so far, and you, you really have to feel for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there's so much pressure here. This is the biggest tournament of the year. So much prestige, prizes, everything on the line. And you just want to be able to show your best games and just show how good you are and prove to everybody that I do belong with the world's best. Yeah. And in games like these, it doesn't always happen. But Jay looks like he's rearranging <laughs> energy all over the place. Um, trying to force uh, some Mewtwo action. Yeah. You know, if you try to Mewtwo me back, sorry, it's over. All right, so that's actually really smart from Jay. He puts three energy on both Mewtwo's, and he's like, okay, if you knock out this one, the other one just knocks you out. Yeah. Game over. And it's really like, putting stuff in a, a bad position. Yeah, and I forgot, Jay still gets to use Portrait. <laughs> So there's a Juniper and an N. I don't know how many cards are left in Jay's deck, but Juniper could be bad. Yeah, um... Oof, he just goes out and does it, though. So he must have a decent amount. He has to kind of assume that he's going to win in the next couple turns, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Uh, he's already played his Shaman, though. I think he's attached as well. Yeah. Yeah, to the Mewtwo. So right I now, think this is fine, though, because either way, uh, he's getting two prizes the next turn. Yeah, Stefan would need, like, a Lost Remover to have a chance in this game. Remove that Double Colas from the bench Mewtwo, knock out the active. Hope for the best. Um, oh. Looks like he's playing an old-school energy search, switch. though. <laughs> or he just uh, let that fail and yeah. opt to use the end. So, at least he gets to go out in style Yeah. if he, gets to, if he goes out here. Um the old school energy search it's all the way back from like Fossil I think yeah gotta love the style yeah <laughs> and it's gonna come down to here another end to two Stefan's gonna draw four I, I really don't know what he can do at this point to be honest yeah, there, I don't think there are any outs at all to this scenario and he's just kind of dead to the board um, Jay's got everything he needs only thing I can see is, like, obviously he has to retreat this turn, otherwise yeah, he just over. instantly loses. If he retreats, maybe he gets knocked out, and he drops down, like, a Terrakian, double attaches to it, and he can catch with a Dark Rank and two prizes. But he actually promotes you two. Oh. There's the catcher. And there we have it. Jay Hornung will advance to his second top four yep. wow. at the World Championships. What a season he's what having. What an accomplishment. Top four at U.S. Nationals. Top four at Worlds. He's not done yet. Yeah, he still has another match to play. Yeah, he's not going to be satisfied with this top four. Definitely not. I mean, this is a guy who's been here before. He's told me he really wants to get that one big victory under his belt. He wants to say, I have won this big yeah. tournament. He's always been the guy to take second, third, second, third, over and over and over at Nationals and Worlds, and now this is opportunity to take the crown and be world champion. Yeah, I'm pumped for him. I, I hope he can do it. Like, as, when you see him lose these games in top four, you really start to feel for him, and maybe this is the year. And I want to just say shout-out to Stefan. You went so far. You came yeah. so far through the LCQ. It's really a grind. You've played so many games over the weekend, and maybe it started to wear on him a little bit. We saw his deck kind of sputtered out, and that's really unfortunate. Yeah, he played his heart, heart out for sure. I mean, he's very passionate about the game. He got extremely far. He is one of the top eight players in the world oh, this year. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, he, he didn't even have an invite going into this yeah. weekend. So he has to surpass his expectations. You know, we've said he he didn't have too much success at Worlds in the previous years. Yeah. He made a great run here. But Jay, he'll be the one moving on. Yeah. And uh, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Jay is a great guy. Just a great player. Of course, he does all of his articles on six prizes, too. So he's a big figure in the community. Yeah. Uh, 
I couldn't imagine many better people to have going this deep in the tournament. Yeah, he is one of the probably prominent figures of the community. Everyone loves Jay. He does a lot for the game. Yeah. Tons of promotion. What we're trying to do, he helps us out. He loves us. So, yeah. really a great guy. Great guy. Even better player. And he is going to advance to top four. That means he's secured for an invite to yeah. next year's world. So we'll see him again next yeah. year for sure. From here, it's all about pride. Who is going to take the crown of world champion? Yep. I don't know what match we're going to get next. And either way, it's going to be some great players. Yeah. I can guarantee it'll have Dark Rye in it this time. <laughs> That's for sure. All Dark Rye decks yeah. are left. CMT has been kicked out. No Electrics, no CMT, yeah. no Vileplume. CMT was the last man standing, and he has fallen. Yeah. Darkness has fallen here <laughs> at the World Championships. That's going to wrap it up from the top eight here at Worlds. I've been Kyle Sukovich. Drew Holton. And we will be back with the top four here from the World Championships. Woo!